Hello, my name is Dr Phil Buckley. I'm a senior lecturer in ecology at Canterbury Christchurch University. Welcome to Summertime Science and welcome to my back garden. I would like today for you to come away from this with a knowledge of five common grasses that you can identify by sight. So in order to do that, you just need two bits of anatomy for grasses. So if I can imagine uh, you've got the grass flower, so that's the stalk of the flower, and then coming off it, you'd have a number of very obvious, distinct sort of flowering type units. And each of these is called a spikelet. Sometimes these spikelets have got a hair-like structure coming out of them, and that hair-like structure is called an awn, A-W-N. That's all you need for today, spikelets and awns. So, I'd like to introduce you to a magnificent set of awns. Over here, we've got this magnificent beast. And if you look, you can see these fantastic thick bushy awns sitting up. This is um, a barley. It's from the genus Hordium. Uh, it's, its proper name is wall barley. I used to call it arrow grass and throw it at people as a kid. Uh, its Latin name is Hordium murinum. So in order to remember this, you can remember that there are two, um, you could break up hordium into two words, horde and um. So if you break it up into horde and um, uh, you can imagine that there's a poor person um, who's called murinum. His parents were very cruel and they, and he's got these grasses and he's, he's, he's holding them all together. So he's hoarding them. So hordium murinum. Another thing that you can do with, um, in order to remember Latin names or remember grasses, uh, your memory works better if you form an emotional connection, both with the grass and with the Latin name. I love you, Hordia Murinum. Oh, sorry, wife. Don't worry about it. Uh, right, next, um, grass talking about awns. If we go over to this side, we've got this magnificent beast. So it's quite a tall grass. And if, I, if you want to um, zoom in there, you can see that it's got, uh, it's definitely got awns. I don't know if you can see, you should be able to. A lot of the awns are a little bit wonky and they're a bit twizzled. Um, they're not straight. So it's got wonky awns. Now this grass is false oak grass, otherwise known as Arhenatherum alatius. Now, if you're gonna learn a Latin name, this is the name to learn because um, it sounds difficult, but it's actually easy. So if you imagine you start with R like a pirate, it's A double R, then hen, female chicken, atherum, I can't help you with. But after you remembered R and hen, atherum should be easy. The species name is Elatius. Now, um, you can imagine after you've memorized the name R hen atherum, you'll probably be quite elated. If you were Roman and elated, you'd be Elatius. So R hen atherum Elatius. Another grass that you'll come across um, it's extremely common in the UK, is this one. So you can see that it's got these big bushy um, bits sticking out. And these bits are thought to look a little bit like the pads on a male chicken's foot. So this is called um, cock's foot grass. Um, the Latin name is Dactylus glomerata. So Dactylus means claw or foot. Um, and um, so Dactylus glomerata, and if you, I don't know, maybe if you're a botanist or you're not a mad chicken expert, that does look like a chicken's foot. Now I'd like to introduce you to the most common grass in the UK, and it's down here. <sighs> so here we have this, um, and you can see it's got these very obvious spikelets poking out either side. Now what I'd like to do is just turn this grass on its side and you'll see, hopefully, that 
all the spikelets are sat on one side and the whole thing disappears when you turn it to its side. So they're poking out on either side of the stalk as it goes up. They're like massively flappy um, uh, sticking out ears. So this grass is called Lolium perenni. It's rye grass and you'll find it all over the place. What I like about this grass is it contrasts so closely with the final grass that I'm going to show you. Oh. So it's over here. Now, this grass is, um, this grass, you can see the spikelets, instead of sitting um, and poking out, they're pushed flat against the um, against the stalk. They're the same sorts of spikelets, but they're pushed flat against the stalk. If I turn the spikelet that way, I'm sorry, my hands are shaking now. If I turn the spikelet that way and then turn it this way, you'll see they're just sort of orientated um, so that they sit flat, like very flattened pinned back ears. So this is uh, cooch grass, uh, the most common cooch grass that you'll come across inland uh, is common cooch. Uh, and the Latin name for that is Elemis repens. So Elemis repens. Now, at this point, you might be asking, why would we want to know about grasses? Why would you want to be able to identify them? Well, as an ecologist, if I can tell what the grasses are, if I can identify the grasses and plants in an area, I can tell things about that area. For example, what is the, what is the nutrient status of the soil? What kind of habitat am I looking at? And you can do that in a variety of ways. Once you can identify um, plants, you can use things like, um, there's a, a system called Ellenberg scores, and Ellenberg scores can be used to identify, uh, for example, the nutrient status. Each plant has an Ellenberg score identified with it. If that score is high, for example, for nutrients, it can survive in high nutrient conditions or needs high nutrient conditions. If its Ellenberg score is very low, then it lives in low nutrient conditions. Uh, Ellenberg scores can be used for nutrients. They can be used for amount of light that the plant needs. They can be used for things like salinity and also moisture levels that the plant needs or can tolerate. Another complementary system is the National Vegetation Classification System or NVC. And the NVC system is um, you look at the entire um, area, entire community, and based on that, you can characterize that community. So for example, you might have specific sand dune communities or chalk grassland communities, and you've got a number of different types of sand dune and chalk grassland community. Now, how this is useful is if you are looking at a community, so let's say you're on a sand dune, you characterize the community and you find instead of, um, instead of sand dune system, what you've got is a mixed grasses system, you can tell that that sand dune is enriched and perhaps you need to carry out some management to lower the nutrient levels in the sand dune in order to get your lovely sand dune vegetation back. Right, that is everything that I wanted to tell you. Um, I hope you've enjoyed this as much as I did and I hope to see you for another summertime science lecture soon. <laughs>